and a lady from North Carolina and, and assure her that our thoughts and prayers are with her and, and the families of those who are, are fallen. I now recognize my, my good friend from uh, Texas, Mr. Roy. I thank the gentleman from Colorado. I thank him for organizing this important topic of conversation. And I thank the gentlelady from North Carolina for recognizing the law enforcement officers in her home state, much like the rest of our states, who put their, line on, put their lives on the line every single day to defend us, protect our communities. This is an important week, obviously, for law enforcement. And I think it's germane to the point that my friend from Colorado is making about canceling. Because this whole notion of canceling isn't just about corporations. It's just not about technology. It's not just about Amazon. It's not just about Twitter and Facebook. It's about canceling the very people that are like our friend from North Carolina was just talking about, these law enforcement officers, canceling police officers, canceling law enforcement, canceling those who are standing up and defending us every single day. We hear it. I had a little girl in my home district in Austin who wrote a project for her school in which she was uh, outlining the, uh, how she was upset about her father, her dad, who was a police officer, was being treated. And how when he would come home and, and he you know, was despondent a little bit about the day, because our law enforcement officers are being harassed, targeted, criticized, mocked, defunded. And this is purposeful. This is happening every single day, and we're, we're, we're literally working to cancel law enforcement. In Austin, Texas, they defunded police, $150 million. Now we've seen a 50% spike in homicides. We have homeless encampments all across the street. We have the 1999 levels of funding for police department for a city that's grown by leaps and bounds since then. This canceling of law enforcement leaves us at risk, and it undermines the very security of our communities. But it's real, and it's happening in real time. 20 major cities have cut police budgets. Uh, $1.7 billion has been cut from police departments nationwide. But it's not just law enforcement. We're talking about that here because of my friend from North Carolina. But it's about corporations. Our nation, we're sitting here in the people's house, in front of the American flag. And our nation right now is increasingly run by corporations more than the men and women who are in this body. I mean, think about it. We hardly ever meet. We never amend. We never debate. We never do any actual give and take here on the floor. We get up and speech file a little bit. Meanwhile, corporations are deciding who gets to get their voice heard. Corporations are deciding, by the way, what election laws are warranted in Georgia or Texas. Venerable corporations like Coca-Cola, Delta Airlines, Major League Baseball in the United States of America, baseball has been politicized. Baseball. Can't even watch baseball with my son without having to figure out and worry about how he's going to be viewing America because Major League Baseball has decided it's more important to be woke and move the All-Star game from 50% black Atlanta to 10% black Denver. Why? So they go around patting themselves on the back in Colorado while they tap, you know, say, hey, look at me, I'm driving my Subaru and I've got an Apple sticker on my car. No offense to the gentleman from Colorado. But is that woke? Hank Aaron passed away this year. We could have celebrated his life with an all-star game in Atlanta, Georgia, and woke corporate Major League Baseball decides it's more important to make a statement about election laws in Georgia, which, by the way, the proposed laws are very little different than the laws in Colorado, as my friend from Colorado knows, but they wanted to make a statement through their corporate power and their woke corporate boards that are packed with all these elite Harvard Business School and Yale School of Business types that are going into these corporate boardrooms and trying to tell us how to live our lives in little old Texas or, or Georgia or Colorado. That's what we face with these corporations that are trying to tell us how to live. I appreciate my friend from Colorado pointing and giving us the time to focus on this important issue tonight. We've got to reclaim our ability to live free in this country. And we ought to ask ourselves that question more and more. Are we truly free with wide open borders and half a million apprehensions and $30 trillion in debt and corporations telling us how to live our lives? Are we truly free in this country? I think we ought to ask that question over and over and over. And I will yield back to my good friend from Colorado. I thank my friend from